Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We have a few announcements today. Let me get to them. First of all, after church today, we're going to be taking labels onto the water bottles that we'll be handing out next week in lieu of service because of the Elmwood Avenue Arts Festival. We're not going to have service because of lack of parking and congestion in the neighborhood. But we will be handing out water bottles. So, like I said, today we'll be taking the labels onto the water bottles that represent our church. So anybody who can help, we'd appreciate it. There are sign-up sheets in the back for the community picnic, the welcome back picnic, the welcoming me and my relationship with this congregation on September 18th. So there are sign-up sheets for volunteers and donors for things that we're going to use on that day. So please, if you would, the community playground. If you guys heard, but one day we had a press conference, all the politicians and all the news people were here on Monday. Another, yes, I know, another groundbreaking. But this was for real. Construction starts um, tomorrow or Tuesday after they get set up, after they bring their dumpsters and get their equipment here, and it should be completed by the end of the week. So next week when we come, the playground should be complete and open and wonderful and a gift to this community. I thought I had another one. The blessing box. The blessing box. Always the blessing box to use donations. It's used all the time, every day, every night. So please, non-perishable items. If you could donate, just drop off, leave what you can, take what you can, um, and it will continue to be a blessing to our community. That being said, why don't we worship God? Please join me in our call to worship, printed in the book. Stand if you are able. Friends, God knows us before we are born. God agrees and consecrates us. Listen for God's call speaking through the Spirit. We are ready to hear and respond. Let us worship God. Our first hymn today is in the bulletin. It's number 53. Oh God, who gives us hope. Friends, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just. He will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
and humility and faith, let us now confess our sins to God. Eternal God, you call, but we fail to listen. We rationalize our way out of doing what we desire. We excuse ourselves from your work, claiming our own inequities. You promise to be good with us, but we fail to trust you. Transform us. Encourage us. Make us steadfast in faith. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. You have been reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. Find peace that you have been forgiven. Let us now share the joy of that peace with one another. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all now. Hello. Good to see you. I wasn't sure if you were going to be here because I sent a note to Drew and said we're here in your lovely town Friday night. And he says that we just arrived. He's there with the girls. Peace. 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 They're in Pittsburgh. Oh, that's right. <laughs> They're in Pittsburgh, the girls. Yeah. I see Drew's posts on, on Facebook. Yeah. I guess he's really into riding the bike. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs>
Our lesson today is going to come from the book, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. It is the story of Jesus healing a crippled woman. Now he, Jesus, was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just when, just then, there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled over her for 18 years. She was bent over and quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began to praise God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured, cured her on the Sabbath, he kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days to be cured, not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrite, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, who Satan bound for eighteen years, be set free from this bondage on this Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at the wonderful things that he was doing. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to So last week's lesson was so eye-opening to me. I told you guys that I had not heard that reading before. I Somehow it escaped me. But I was thrilled when I read this week's lectionary reading. It's not every week that lectionary continues on a story. But this week, we're blessed to have a continuation. I am just old enough to remember Paul Harvey on the radio, my parents were avid listeners, and this story reminded me of Mr. Harvey. Now we know the rest of the story. This lesson builds on last week. In fact, in the fact that Jesus demonstrates how and when we should break rules. Here we hear a story of Jesus while he was teaching on the Sabbath. He stops his lesson. And he called upon this woman to heal her from her ailment. We heard that this week the leader of the synagogue very upset because it was the law not to do work on the Sabbath. He told them that there are six days on which the work is to be done. And this woman here should have come then, not on this, the Sabbath. I want to kind of take a sidetrack here. I wanted to kind of explain why. The Sabbath is and was so important. Recently retired pastor of First, Presbyterian, First Presbyterian Church of East Aurora, Pastor Buddy Hunt, in 2013, after he completed his doctorate in spiritual formation, he wrote a couple books, and I've been honored to receive copies of him as gifts. Copies of this book of, from, of gifts. From him. And in this book, he wrote about Sabbath keeping. But he acknowledged his wonderment on why so few people these days observe the Sabbath. As we know, even God took a day off. We are told about this in the book of Exodus. God spoke Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor. But on the seventh day, it is a Sabbath day to the Lord. The Sabbath, the Sabbath should be a day of rest, a day of restoration, a day to replenish, a day to renew. But in this, in this crazy world we live in, with so much stress and demands that we all have on us, we, we fail to recognize, to practice this important directive. We tend to think if I can only do a little bit more work on this day, maybe then I can catch up. Maybe then I can get some rest. But the problem with that is 
we never catch up, right? There's always something more demanding on our time, on our energy, on our attention. Without an intentional effort and commitment to the Sabbath, our rest never comes, resulting in burnout, increasing stress levels, and even making us physically ill from overwork. We are not made to work every day. The need for Sabbath is built into our eternal, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual being. The Sabbath is yet another calling to live a holy life, keep everything in balance, to balance our work and our rest, with worship and prayer being at the center of it all. The Sabbath is really a good day, the kind of day everybody dreams of, a day worthy of observing. And if we truly desire to lead a healthy and happy life, observing the Sabbath, we should do. If you can recall last Sunday, I told you that sometimes you have to break some eggs to make an omelet. Make an omelet means adding something good to those eggs. Some of my favorites, ham and cheese. Who doesn't love ham and cheese? And here we see that Jesus, you see, he breaks the law of Sabbath to add something good. To heal a woman in pain she has endured for 18 years. This is what Jesus meant about the vision that we spoke about last week. Sometimes we have to break to make it better. Stepping out of the box in the name of righteousness, doing what is right, fighting for those in need, even if it's just a good gesture, a kind gesture. In our announcements today, I announce the rule of worship next week. We will be handing out water bottles to the community for the Elmer Arts Festival. And an act such as this could be thought of as breaking the Sabbath, right? We're going to be doing work. But we're doing it because it's the right thing to do. We're demonstrating our compassion. We're showing his children that we care. We're showing that our faith community is open for their needs. There's another thing that Jesus breaks in the story that is not so easy to see. And it took me a couple days for this to come to me, for me to really get into this reading. If you read very carefully, there's something different about the healing that Jesus performs that is different than other healings he has done to this point. If we look elsewhere in the Bible, we read a story when Jesus heals a bleeding woman. Jesus tells her that she is healed because of her faith. There's another story when Jesus cures two blind men. But before he does that, he asks them if they believe. He reassures their faithfulness. We are told Jesus cured a paralyzed man who was lured to a roof by his friends. And it's specifically written in Scripture that as he was being lowered, Jesus saw his faith. And when Jesus cleansed the leper, that leper fell before Jesus on his knees and addressed him as my Lord, affirming his faith. But this woman says nothing. And she's healed anyway. We have no evidence that this woman is a woman of faith, a woman of belief. She might have just been a curious passerby. 
But Jesus sees her, sees her suffering, feels for her, and heals for her. We're not told until the healing is actually complete that she praises God. I feel that this healing is one that defines Jesus' identity and authority as a true shepherd. Jesus cares for everyone. It also tells us, tells us of God as a God of mercy. You see, Jesus doesn't even pray for this woman. He simply sees her needs and fulfills them. He does not worry about her faith or even the faith of the people who are witnessing this. Because he's breaking their Sabbath. He is breaking a law that they have followed since the days of creation. He does what is right at the right time even if it requires the suspension of perfectly good rules. Rules like observing the Sabbath. It's not that he disagrees with the Sabbath, not at all. But what he does believe is when there is a need, he, we, should stand up and help him. In a great speech, Dr. Martin Luther King said, there is never a wrong time to do what is right. I think he may have been aware of this passage when he said that. I think he was reflecting on this exact passage. Jesus continues, and he asked the synagogue leaders, why is it okay to unbind your ox or your donkey to give it water? Basically, to give it life, right? The donkey and the ox are going to need water to live on that day. But it's not the right thing to do to unbind a woman from the hold of Satan, to give her a new life. Why is the life of an ox or a donkey more important than the life of this woman? See, Jesus' work on the Sabbath is exactly the perfect example of God's free power over all the bondage at work in a world and the oppressive burdens we experience in our lives. This unnamed woman, well, she becomes a testimony to those freedoms of God. She becomes a testament to the ways to act righteously and the ways to give praise to God for his merciful acts. Because God's reign, we know, is faithful. We know the word, the world will be repaired when the time comes. There will be no blindness. There will be no loss of hearing, no disfigurement, no conflicts of what's good for one and what's good for all. God's reign will result in perfection. All that is what God has planned for each and every one of us, all of his children, in everlasting life. So friends, on this, on this day, on this Sabbath, go home, read a book, take a walk, enjoy your gardens as we end the summer. Eat a good meal, but most of all, take a minute to pray, to give thanks for God's plan for us. Rejoice in God's reign as the healer of all and praise Him for the promise of rest and renewal. I thank God for all He's done and all He will do 
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, your promises are so overwhelming to us as we, as we make it through our lives here on earth. They're hard to put our hands around, to realize that your ultimate goal for us is perfection. We thank you for the message today. We thank you for the direction on how and when to break the rules of our society, to do what is righteous, to do your work, to be your hands and feet. Sometimes we feel unworthy. And we thank you for the spirit that you give to us to continue to drive us. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now to raise our prayers, our joys, and our sorrows to God. And this morning I ask you, is there any prayers, concerns, joys that we can lift to the Lord today? Yes. I'd like to pray for Sue and Ron, my friend Sue is in the emergency room of Buffalo General Hospital. She had high blood pressure. She's just had an operation on her foot. And her left foot for tumors. And she's got to have an operation on her right foot and her lung. She's also suffering from ADD and bipolar disorder, so she has a lot of problems. She needs a lot of help. So God's comfort for Sue and Ron. Sue and Ron, but also for Kenny, Kathy, and Robin. My friend Kenny um, is being treated, uh, was treated for cancer of the liver. He was supposed to go back and see if it recurred. We're just praying that it doesn't recur. So for Kenny, Kathy, and Robin in their times of struggle with health. Yeah, and also my friends Kurt and Jennifer. My What's her name? Kurt and Jennifer. Kurt and Jennifer. Kurt and Jennifer. Jennifer's living in Kurt's house now without his permission. And the landlord's trying to get to her so Kurt can go back to his house. And she took over his house. Okay. Are there any others? Their hearts 
with affirmation. And their souls with esteem and confidence. Lord, hear our prayers for provision for the grieving, the lost, the lonely, the sick, the poor. Provide for the survivors of our world's violence who live and relive trauma every day. Lord, provide shelter for the refugees and escapees of war and famine, devastating floods and wildfires. Provide food for the hungry of the stomach and the soul. Lord, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers of protest against all the injustice we see in the world. Help us interrogate our systems and the leaders who build them. Lord, only you can be our judge. Help us to expose bias and confront structures that privilege few and oppress the many. Help us resist greed and empire building, turning from temptations to overconsume, to hoard, and to destroy. Lord, on this day, hear our prayers and petition for those we love and those who are in need. We thank you for the good news about Peggy Wood. We ask you to look over Dolores and her recent infection of COVID. We ask you to hold in your hands Sue and Ron as Sue fights many demons. Ken, Kathy, and Robin, Kurt, and Jennifer, may you provide your grace to them. Great God, we lift in silence to you now. Glorious God, you deserve all our honor and praise. Grateful for your attention and your presence with us in prayer. Hear us now as we collectively pray the prayer that Christ taught us. By saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Believe us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The first verse of the Bible about God and generosity. He gave us the gift of this beautiful, diverse creation. He gave us the good thing here and all the animals that live here among us. On this the Lord's day, we come together to thank God and to offer our gifts so that the ministry of this church will continue to grow and be a blessing to our community. Let us now all gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise.
God of the Bible, and steadfast love, you provide for us in ways that we do not always know or recognize. You have prepared and provided for us since we were born. Please receive these tokens of our gratitude. Bless them. May the gifts we return to you provide for others in a way that gives glory to you and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn is in our bulletin number 300. We are one in the Spirit. Nice. 